What's up everybody, Yogi here. Today I'm going to be doing a Ninja Rose Season 22 run without any Blazing Fest characters. Now, if you guys haven't seen it already, I will link it in the description box below, but I did a collab with Nagato Blazing, and in that collab, we pretty much were doing a Ninja Rose race without any Blazing Fest characters, and I was successfully able to beat it a few times using this team, so I thought I would do it in my usual guide-like format and, you know, tell you guys pretty much what I was thinking behind making this team but the other reason for me making this video is so that it can help you guys out give you some ideas if you are struggling to beat this ninja road so for the first team I'm using here this is going to be the team I'm going to be nuking map 9 with this is not going to be a good enough team to take them all out the goal is to just get rid of as many as you possibly can and the reason I picked Haku is because pretty good multiplier on the ultimate and gives him perfect dodge after using it so it will help me live a little longer. Also, it's long range AoE which is the most important thing. Then we have Daidara, he's also a long range AoE on his ultimate, it can hit everyone. He also has the boost from Ninja Rose so he is an extremely good unit to use here. I actually use him on my main farming team, I'm going to also do a video showing the main team I farm with as well. But the other thing he also does is Jesus Seal, so that's another great thing to add on. But I'm going to be boosting them up now with my Gango and Obito. By the time I'm done stacking up the attack boost with them, they will pretty much have 100% extra attack power, which is really going to push their damage output over the limit. Now, if you don't have Haku or Daidara, you want to use, of course, you know, Blazing Fest characters if you have them. Units like Shinden Sasuke, Six Pad Naruto's. Either of the six path Madara's, six path, not six path, uh, Ido Hashirama, those type of units, you know, especially if they ignore substitution because it is a problem on the last map. And the very last thing I need to tell you guys is when it comes to attack boosters, if you do not have Gengo or Kid Obito, you want to go ahead and use someone like Skill One Tail Naruto. And you can even use Harm Naruto, PC Heart Harm Naruto, that can really help you guys out. but. It is a 100% boost for one turn. So you're really going to have to stack up the turns with other units. Otherwise, you're just going to have to use Naruto's ultimate on one unit and then immediately go for the nuke on the last map, which might give you a chance to get off one attack versus several attacks like I am with my team. Now for map two here, we only have four enemies. They all have 10,000 defense. You need a strong enough Jutsu to get rid of them and I can confirm they have less than 2,000 HP. I really think they have less than that, but as long as you have a strong enough Jutsu or Ultimate to get rid of them, that will work there. I had to stall it there and use Shizune's Ultimate because she was my only Wisdom character. Otherwise, I would have had to use someone else's Ultimate, and I really didn't want to do that. For map 3 here, it's just going to be the Sound 5. They are extremely easy to get rid of. All they have is 100% chance of countering you, depending on how close you are. And I just decided to nuke them all going to the next map. But in your case, if you need to solve for Chakra, you go ahead and do that there. Map 4 here, we have Karuma. And he is, again, another easy map. Just go ahead and nuke him with your ultimates. I don't know what his danger does because I usually beat him before he gets to that point. Because, again, on map 3, you can stall back up no problem. And you will also be getting back all of your Chakra for the fourth map. That is standard for all the bosses on this ninja road. Map 5, we have a body one tail Naruto. He does have full resistance to Jutsu sealing and immobilizing with a 10,000 point heal every turn. This one map is the main reason why this team has two skill units, so I can pretty much nuke him and get onto the next map. So, bringing two skill units will definitely help out, otherwise, you just need really strong nukers. Now, for this boss, we have Itachi. He just only has the two spots. Again, I did not know what the shield does because if you see how much damage Itachi did to him with that one attack, it does not have too much HP, so it's very easy to get rid of it before you know he activates it. Aside from that, just gonna go all out here using all my ultimates because I'm gonna get all that chakra back on the next map anyway. It doesn't matter to stall up. And he doesn't really do that much damage to you for it to really be a problem, you know? The main idea I had when it came to making this team in the first place was all about AoE and strong attacks along with healing. That's why I have Hashirama and Shizune. You know, as long as you have a good balance of AoE and healing, you can make this Ninja Road a lot easier. So 
So for map 7 here, we have several body units. They all have fixed damage. That's damage you take just from being within the vicinity of them. So you really need to make sure that when you come into this map, you have a very strong AoE ultimate to get rid of most, if not all of them. That's why I made sure that I started off this map with my Naruto so I could get rid of most of them. Then from here, I'm going to pretty much get rid of all of them down to one. Now since Naruto is the only one missing full chakra, I'm still going to go ahead to the next map anyway because I know I can handle it. But when it comes to you guys, I highly suggest that you go ahead and get all the chakra ready on all of your units because for the next map, you're going to want to be ready. On to the third boss, we have the Ten Tails, my least favorite boss in the game. And what you want to do here is go ahead and nuke him with your AoE ultimates. Of course, hit the main body if you can, but your main focus is to get rid of those other spots because it will do a lot of damage to you and you will not have a safe zone until you get rid of them. After you get rid of all the extra spots, your safe zone is going to be in the bottom left corner of the map. And if you get hit with him, he will Chakra Recovery seal you and also health seal you. Not a 100% chance, but a very good chance that he hits you with that. Now, while these ailments are annoying, it's not too much to deal with because they will go away after three to five turns. The only other advice I can give you guys when it comes to this map is you need to watch out for the danger from the main body because the regular attacks from the main body will be a circle on the upper half of the map and then a rectangle on the right side of the map that's why the bottom left spot is a safe zone but when you see the danger he's going to be doing a full map ultimate it does do a good amount of damage to you as well so you need to look out for that but i do recommend stalling up your chakra for the next map you'll see what happens but i will just say that i really wish i did stall up more with this team if you are running one team to beat this ninja road which i will be showing in my next video of ninja road you got to make sure before you go on to the next map that none of your units are chakra sealed. That is the most important thing, obviously. If not, then you're kind of screwing yourself over in this case. But since I'm gonna be switching over to my boosted team, I don't need to worry about them being chakra sealed in this case. So now that we're on to map nine and I'm switching to my other team, allow me to talk about the other two units being Pain and Tintin. The reason I brought Pain was because he's my healer or some form of healing otherwise I wouldn't have any whatsoever and he also has a boost from his ninja road so he does some really good damage to the enemies he also has high HP like really high HP with the boost so that helps me live here longer you can also take out one of the bravery enemies stuff like that and then Daidara not Daidara uh, Ten Ten is boosting Daidara with her 150 buddy skill so that's just to push his damage output even farther and she also has a long range AoE ultimate, so that's why I ended up bringing her. So when I go for Daidara's Jutsu here, keep in mind that he, not his Jutsu, but his ultimate, keep in mind that he also has Jutsu Seal, something very helpful. Only other unit I know off the top of my head that has Jutsu Seal on a AoE ultimate is going to be Body Blazing Fest Hashirama. I use him on my main team for farming this as well. Now I know I said you want to bring a lot of AoE to get rid of all the Akatsuki members, but when it comes to getting rid of certain ones, if you can help it, you want to get rid of Itachi because he does have a long range AoE Jutsu. He has the biggest one out of everyone here, so he is a big problem. Hidon is also someone I'm going to target to get rid of because I know that he gives his allies up to 50% chance of substitution, so he definitely has to go. Other units like... Kasame and Conan have up to 500 attack weakening if you're too close to them and then you have units like Kakazu with a 100% chance of counter. They all have their own little stuff. If it's not negative towards you, it's going to be boosting up their teammates, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, once my boosted team is gone, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my first team and do everything I can to get rid of all the Akatsuki members. I already know that my third team consisting all of body characters by the way is going to be enough to take out the boss of the last map so as long as I can get rid of all the Akatsuki members I'm good at this point if you want to stall up more 
and you know have all their jutsus and ultimates ready for the last map just to be on the safe side you can do that as well but the last thing I tell you guys about this map that you guys want to keep in mind is whenever you can help it keep your units spaced out if you leave them too close together you're just asking to get comboed On to the final boss, we have just Final Valley Naruto, which for me was such a refreshing thing that they've done in the game because it's, you know, just so nice to fight a regular boss instead of having to deal with the huge bosses every single last time on Ninja Road. But anyway, I have a full team of body characters because he is heart. All he's going to be doing is regular attacking, jutsuing, and ultimating you, and no bonus effects whatsoever. The only thing or reason why you would lose on this boss is because of him damaging you too much and you not being able to keep up with you know the healing. So that is why this team is fully body units. I also have attack reduction on Sasuke, Roshi, and Kasame with their jutsus. Roshi and Sasuke also have slip damage as well so using those two together will take away his life quicker also making the damage output he does weaker. Jugo has no self-healing whatsoever, but he also has a field heal that can keep my HP up a little bit, and then he also restores HP whether I use his Jutsu or his ultimate. And if you add up the total amount of healing I get, period, from Roshi and Kasami, that's 500 every turn. I have Gara because he is also boosted by this Ninja Rose, so he has even more HP and attack power. So he's just basically the body nuker here. And I grabbed Naruto just because why not? I wanted to use him again. But if I needed more healing, I would have used someone else in the place of him. But aside from that, just going to keep attacking him until he is gone. Not that hard of a boss, especially with this type of setup. And the main thing to keep in mind if you're still struggling with this boss is balancing out what you're bringing. If you cannot lower his attack, or have enough damage reduction that you want to bring more healing and vice versa you don't need as much healing if you have enough damage reduction or attack weakening anyways you guys that is pretty much it for this ninja road season 22 run without any blazing fest characters hopefully this video helps you guys out gives you some ideas if you're struggling with it don't forget to leave a like drop a comment and subscribe before you go enjoy the rest of the video peace
Let's rock.